Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. No. Oh, they stayed there. Wait a minute. No, they fell over. Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model components as physical containers. That is, components that can contain other components when physics is turned on in the 3D world. Let's get started. Let's reset our simulation. Clean up that mess we just created. So let's actually do an example like this. Let's create a storage shelf that can contain other parts. So go to eCatalog panel, and under Models by Type, I'll click Interior Facilities, and in the search box, just type in Shelf. And we found one item called Storage Shelf, so let's add it to the 3D world. And let's just edit its properties real quick, so we don't need two columns. So in the Component Properties panel, I'll set the columns to be one. And now, what do we want this storage shelf to contain? Let's go to our eCatalog panel, and under Models by Type, click Products and Containers. And let's see, what do we want to pick? Let's use a car tire. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So let's drag that into the 3D world. And when I run the simulation, you can see these components over here are affected by physics, but these two are not. That's because they don't have physical entity behaviors. They're not physical objects right now. So let's reset. Go to the Modeling tab. And with the car tire selected, let's give it a physics entity behavior. Now, since the geometry of this car tire is pretty basic, you don't need to add a collider to it. But for the storage shelf, you would. So I'll select the storage shelf here. Notice it has some clone geometry at each shelf. So let's give each of these shelves a collider. I'll go to the Feature Properties panel, expand Physics, and give it a precise collider. And since this storage shelf did not already had a, had a physical entities behavior, you can see in the output panel one was added for me. So now if I run the simulation, you can see now the shelf is being affected by physics. And if I go back to the Home tab, notice that I can apply a pushing force to the car tire and the shelf as well. So I know they are now physical objects. So let's actually see if we can push the car tire onto the storage shelf. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Get there. Get there. Yeah, we got there. All right. So notice now the car tire is being contained on one of these shelves. And let's actually try to move it up to the second one without creating a really big mess. Uh, <laughs> not quite. So to fix that, let's actually reset the simulation. I'll then use a shortcut for the line command and just snap the car tire to the second shelf here. So now when I run the simulation, notice that the car tire is now contained on this shelf. It didn't fall through it. That's because we added a collider here for the shelf. The storage shelf itself is a physical object, and so is the car tire. Now in some other cases, you may want to have these rails also have colliders, but we don't need to worry about that right now. Let's go and add another example, in this case a pallet with parts on it. So let's go to our eCatalog panel. And under Products and Containers, let's find a pallet. So I'll use a Euro pallet drag it into the 3D world. And now what do we have to do to make it a physical object? Of course, add a physical a physics entity behavior. So let's go to the modeling tab, behaviors group, and add that entity. We don't really need to be concerned with uh, any colliders here because the physical entity will just encompass the whole shape of this palette, so that's fine. Let's now take the car tire, go back to the home tab, and let's actually move it above the palette. Whoop, that might be a bit too far. So let's move it all the way over here. That looks fine. So what do we expect to happen? Let's actually clone a few more car tires. Move them right there. Now when we run the simulation, physics will push these car tires down with the force of gravity onto the pallet. So they should stick, and they do. So now if I was to move the pallet, notice that it's now containing the car tires as well. So if I move it too much, say if you're with a forklift, you can see the car tires will fall out. Now another type of example for a physical container is some type of closed space, like a box or something. So let's reset our simulation, and now let's go to our eCatalog panel, and in Products and Containers, let's find a box. There we go, that's fine. And this is what I'm talking about here. We have kind of a closed space here, but some open entry point for components. So in order for this to work, these sides of the box do need to have colliders so the, you know, the parts don't fall out the sides of it. To do that, let's go to the Modeling tab, and then I'll select one of the features here. I'll then go to the Feature Properties panel and give it a collider of Precise. That's fine. Let's do the same for these other two sides here. And we also need one for the bottom as well, so things don't fall out of the, out of the box when we lift it up. 
set that to be precise as well. So by adding the colliders, we also added a physical entity, I'm sorry, a physics entity behavior to this component, so it's a physical object. I don't know why I keep on saying physical entity behavior, but you get the gist. And we also have colliders for these sides of the boxes. So now let's create another part, or as many parts that can go in, and fit inside this box. So when we move it, they move with the box. Let's go back to the home tab. And let's use uh, let's use balls. So let's add a ball. And then we'll go to the modeling tab. And let's go ahead and give it a precise collider. So I'll select the feature, go to the feature properties panel, give it a precise collider. This will also make this containing node have a physic entity behavior. I set it right that time. And now let's go back to our home tab. And I'm just going to copy and paste this ball a couple times. So I'm using a shortcut called the clone command here in the mini toolbar. So now we have four balls. And now we want to fit them inside our box. So let's actually drag this one over here, this one over there. And you can just drag them inside the box for this test case. So now we have four balls inside the box. So when we turn on physics, the ball should stay in the box. And when we move the box, you know, these balls shouldn't fall out of it. So let's start physics. See the balls right now, they're staying inside the box. So far, so good. Let's apply a little pushing force to the box. Yeah, there we go. You can see they're now moving around. That's great. Let's see if we can actually make them fall out of the box. So let's tip it on its side. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And I hope you have a wonderful day.